10 meeting of the planning board come into session. Our uh, first agenda item is the minutes of our previous meeting. Does anyone have any comments, corrections, additions? Move to accept. Barbara? Move to accept. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? All right, the meetings are approved. Our first item of business, 1055 Shore Road Private Access Way Permit. Adam Mack is requesting an extension of the Private Access Way Permit approval granted by the Planning Board on June 15, 2010 to make a lot located at 1055 Shore Road buildable, Section 1979 Private Access Way Permit. Does the applicant have a presentation to make? I'm John Whitman with Teradyne Consultants, representing the applicant, and I had represented the, the project uh, for its original approval. We're simply here tonight to ask for a 90-day extension of the approval deadlines. Uh, the applicant has uh, delayed the project a little bit on getting uh, the legal forms put together and uh, just uh, complying with the conditions of approval, and we'd just like to uh, have a little bit more time. We've actually submitted everything last week. Uh, to be reviewed, uh, and that deadline was, uh, I believe, up at uh, the 13th of uh, September. So uh, we'd just like to get that extended and get that finalized and uh, get the Mylar into you folks uh, for signature. Anybody have any questions? I have a motion. Okay. Right. No, you go. No. 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 A motion for the board to consider. May it order that based on the request submitted, the request of Adam Mack for a 90-day extension of the private access, access way permit granted for the lot located at 1055 Shore Road be approved. Do we have a second? Second. Carol? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Our next agenda item, Evergreen Memory Care Site Plan Amendment. Lon Walters is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the facility under construction at 126 Scott Dyer Road to change the name from Evergreen Memory Care to Cape Memory Care, Section 19.9 Site Plan Amendment. And you have a presentation for us. Uh, I am Lon Walters. Um, the, uh, as I spoke at the previous, or at the uh, last time I was here, we're changing, or we're proposing to change the name from Evergreen Memory Care to Cape Memory Care because there was a conflict, uh, or we discovered a conflict um, in the name with a nursing home in the neighboring community. So that was the motivation for changing the name. Um, and that's about it. Okay, do you have any, any, in, anything you want to say about the proposed sign, I gather, that you've submitted? Well, the last time I was here, the, the board uh, requested that I submit um, the, the proposed sign. Um, the colors aren't exactly, you know, what they would be. I mean, the blue is not exactly the blue, and the, and the yellow is really gold. It, it will be gold when it's done, but I, I couldn't produce it uh, accurately on the computer. But it, it kind of gives you an idea, and it gives you the scale of the sign, um, you know, the size of it and so forth, which I believe meets the, um, you know, the code for, you know, the sign ordinance code. Um, and that's, you know, that's about it. And where would this sign be located? It's, it's um, in the, in the, front of the building on uh, Scott Dyer Road towards, a little towards the entrance. Uh, it'll have the setback, whatever the, I think it's a 20 or, I think it's a 20 or 25 foot setback from the, from the lot line, which is quite a bit a ways from the road even. So it's, it's, it's gonna be back, you know, a fairly good distance. And although it's, it's um, I presented it as a two-sided sign, it's, it's, it has a slight, you know, V to it so that it is more easily seen because it sits back so far from the road that 
it would it would be hard to see it if if it was a per, uh, perpendicular sign, you know, to the road. Anybody else have any questions about this, Barbara? I actually like name Cape Memory Care better. I think it's more appropriate being in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I do have one quick grammatical question. Uh oh. I believe. You should have an apostrophe after the S on Woodlands because it's possessive. Um, Woodlands, it belongs well, to you. It, I mean, it's up to you. Technically, but. you're right, but we've always sort of presented it this way. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's, uh, you are right. That's okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I like being technically correct, yeah. but that's okay. So. Yes? I, I, not so much a question, but um, kind of a comment on the sign. Um, back in June when uh, the temporary facility sign went up on Scott Dyer Road, I was expecting to see the name Evergreen Memory Care and instead I saw the Woodlands name and I was surprised that you would put a sign out front with the Woodlands name on it after the board had granted your approval based on the police chief's recommendation that the facility not use the Woodlands name. And I went to your website and I did see the, web, the Woodlands name prominently displayed. And when you were here in July, you mentioned that you had hoped to use the Woodlands name in Cape Elizabeth so that people would be aware that you're part of a larger presence. Um, they know um, that you're not just this one entity. So I, I understand your desire, in a sense, to market the facility. But for safety reasons, the uh, town's public safety official did not want to see the Woodlands name. So I kind of look at this sign as marketing versus public safety. And uh, currently, should anyone want to know more about the Cape Memory Care facility, they can go to your web page, where the Woodlands name is. Um, I'm sure it appears on your business cards. Um, if you um, contact and you want information about it, you can, in your letterheads, the Woodland name appears. In your brochures, the Woodland name appears, front and back. On your envelopes, the Woodland name appears. Uh, when you were advertising for employees, the Woodland name appears. In your latest article uh, ad in the Cape Courier, the Woodland name appears. So as far as marketing goes, I think you have your bases covered. And so I kind of look at this as for safety then, do we continue with the Woodlands name on the sign as part of more marketing, or do we just go with what the police chief had originally said back in June, rather not see the Woodlands name? So more of a comment than a question to the other board members. Maureen, has the police chief looked at this and the fire chief? Yes. And they are okay with it? They can live with it. Okay. I don't have any problem with it, then. As long as the police and fire chief say okay, I understand why you want to have it, and I don't have a problem with having it on. I don't either. It's not, Woodlands is not prominent, I guess, on that. I, I don't either. I think the yellow and the red trim is going to stand out, and the black on the bottom is going to be a tagline, and I don't have a problem as long as the police chief and fire chief are happy. Okay, I'll just make one suggestion to the board. It is my understanding, and I just thought you might want to actually say it, that if when you're finalizing the design for the sign, you make some changes, the changes need to go in the direction of minimizing the woodlands and maximizing Cape Memory Care. Is that the sense of the board? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anybody else? Do I have a motion? I don't have my. Oh, you're off. Okay. Barbara? Okay, motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Lon Walters to change the name of the facility located at 126 Scott Fire Road from Evergreen Memory Care to Cape Memory Care be approved subject to the following condition that the main facility sign be the same as the design, sign design submitted by the applicant for the September 13, 2010 planning board meeting. Do we want to say something about the size of the other, I mean, it's smaller here? There is a scale on there. There is. And I think it's fine. Anybody? Okay. 
Do I have a second? Do we want to say something formally about if there are any changes? I mean, well, it's that's qualitative, what I'm not quantitative, though. Right. No, we, I think we can, I'm looking at the, the planning board secretary, I think we can make sure the minutes reflect okay. the board's intent that right. if there's going to be any minor tinkering, mm -hmm. it's going to be Kate memory care with it. Okay. Do I have a second? Right. Second. The only comment I would make is that actually it's not the September 13th meeting. The date of the letter is September 13th, but we're September 21st tonight. You're right. Barbara, you want to make that? Okay, so why don't we say um, be the same as the sign submitted by the applicant in the September 13th, 2010 letter to the planning board. Is that okay? Yeah. Jim? Is that all right with you? Yep. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next item is new business pool mill pond. RP permit, VSP land LLC, represented by Malcolm Pool, is requesting a resource protection permit to remove sediment and leaves from an existing pond located off Mill Road, section 1983, resource protection permit completeness and public hearing. Good evening. Good you have a presentation for us. A brief one. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, uh, would you introduce yourself? I will. My name is Malcolm Poole. I'm a member of the VSP Land LLC. And uh, <clears throat> I'm responsible for making this application on behalf of our uh, new liability company. The property was formerly owned by my mother, Victoria Poole. And during the course of this year, um, we formed an LLC for family planning matters. And as part of that, we looked at the maintenance of a pond that's on the property that you can see on the drawing there. Uh, in the write-up and memorandum that Maureen put out, um, there are a couple of clarifications and modifications I'd like to make in, in our plan of approach to this project. The pond is located here. Off, this is Old Ocean House Road running along the property here and Old Mill Road that runs into the property and there's a small pond that abuts Old Mill Road that we need to do maintenance on. At the upper end of the pond over the past 20 years we've had a sedimentation of leaves and, and silt that have built up to the point where we only have a very narrow thread for stormwater to run through it now. and uh, at this point we have elevations of as high as a foot that are growing grass and uh, basically taking the pond nest out of the pond. What we would like to do is bring an excavator in this fall. Uh, we're going to drain the pond because there's an outlet structure that allows us to do that. Have the excavator remove approximately 500 cubic yards of leaves and sediment. And uh, uh, that will be the project. We'll close the valve on the outlet structure and natural rainfall will refill the pond and that is the extent of uh, the project we plan to take. Now in the write-up of the memorandum, um, item one says that uh, we plan to dam the pond and impound water. That will not be part of our plan. This will be a natural draining and no water will be held back at any time during our operation. We are requesting waivers from a few of the requirements of the resource conservation permit, specifically a vegetative cover, which we uh, are asking not to have a qualified botanist come in. We've provided photographs of the vegetation that's around the pond in our application. Uh, 
with regard to other vegetation, we will support the excavating equipment on mats so that it doesn't damage the lawn or any area around the pond. Um, we do not have any uh, underlying soils data. We're requesting a waiver on this because this is a declared wet zone. We understand that and we'll adhere to all appropriate uh, uh, conditions of working in a wetland zone. The soil we're removing are all a combination of silt and leaves. And the, <clears throat> the final waiver we're asking for is a stormwater runoff plan not to be included in our application. Uh, this is a waterway. It's part of the stormwater drainage system of the area, which we understand and uh, we think we'll be improving the flow and retaining of uh, stormwater by making this excavation. Okay, does anyone have questions? What are you going to do with the, the soil that you excavate? Uh, Skip Murray is doing the work for us and he's going to put it on his loan pile. Okay. Dry it out, sell it. He's giving us a discount on the there you go. contract price for having some nice, rich humus to take back. And let me mention, at this point, we're just considering completeness, whether the application is complete. I do have one completeness question, and that is if you could show me on that map. My, my question is the deed that appears to be part of your submission package, I believe, is just for the three acres of the pond itself and not for the entire parcel that will be affected by the drainage. My understanding is that um, your mother and I, I'm, my question is, does your LLC now own the entire parcel, including the parcel where the drainage is going to be? And if so, I would think we would need evidence of ownership of, of that part of the parcel too. The deed description I have provided you came out of the closing documents for the VSP land LLC and it includes this lot here and this lot here. It's in two parcels. What I have says three point some acres, not 11 acres. So I'm just wondering perhaps there was a second deed for another portion of it that perhaps has not been submitted to the town. No. Or just maybe didn't make it to the package. That's correct. I, I have provided you with the lot two of the two lots that are included in BSP Land LC, and I have lot one's description, which would be this lot here. So can you, the part that I'm concerned about mm -hmm. is the land that will be affected not just by the location of the pond, but also your drainage area. And I'm not sure that's included in the 3.46 acres, so that's really the question. I will have to research that. Okay. I, I do have documents of plenty on the closing of Blaine. Sure you do. <laughs> be glad to provide them. Maureen, I guess I would ask you, is that an element that would normally preclude us from finding completeness since we don't have evidence of ownership of the entire parcel? Yes, it could. Um, and normally I would be a much more concerned than I would be with this project and so I'm going to um, lay a case before the planning board and you can decide how you want to move ahead with it but um, the plan that you have in front of you is a plan that was prepared for by the Poole family and was approved by the planning board um, as a private access way permit prior to this current application so at that time the applicant provided all the deeds uh, they also provided a wetland survey so that even though the applicant is asking for a waiver of the underlying soils information, this plan is based on a very good quality survey of, of underlying soils. So um, this really is a family parcel. And our experience with everything in the past was that every single one of these lots is a family member. If you're still uncertain, you, could, you can deem it incomplete. Um, if you feel fairly comfortable that this is the case, 
you could move ahead and just put any condition on final action. You can't put a condition on your completeness, but you could put a condition on final action that the applicant bring in a deed for the lot in question. So you're, you'd kind of be giving them the benefit of the doubt without the actual I dotted T crossed deed in front of you. I guess my only concern, based on having done a lot of land transactions, is if in the actual transaction, Exhibit A didn't include all of the appropriate lots that should have been included in Exhibit A, which can happen through inadvertence and frequently does, that what we really need is a new, either a joint application by both owners, or we actually are going to need a new deed. Uh, and I don't know if that's stretching it too far to make it conditional upon that occurring. Although it is a, it is a, a family. If, if we hadn't had the prior experience with this land, I would err on the side of caution and not go forward with anything until you had all the deeds. Um, but because this has already been through the board, I mean, not this particular application, but a prior application where we had a complete review of all of this and we know that they, everybody owned this, it's all family, even the, the people to the south are related to the people to the north. This is probably one of the few times when I would say you're, you're, you're safe to move ahead, but it's not my call, it's up to the board. Okay, what's, but other people think about it, Barbara? And now that you're bringing this up, because I didn't pay enough attention to it, I guess. Where is, I mean, lot two is all the way on the other side. It's not affected at all. And, and then it's, okay, but lot, it's lot one. But, but it also looks like it's part of the remaining land, too. Is that correct? This, this drawing names this property here, which is owned by the four of us in the partnership. Right is not part of our application whatsoever. Right. understand. VSP Land LLC is made up of all of the remaining properties outside my mother's home lot, which is 24 Old Mill Road. Yes. And I may have uh, uh, omitted one of the pages because it is described as two lots. But, but where, where is this 3.46 acres we're talking about? Well, um, because we have 11.88 and 2. Neither one of these is 3.46, right. which causes me as much question as it causes you. And uh, um, I will be pleased to sort that out. Okay. I, you, um, when do you plan to saying. do this work? We were hoping to do it in October. Mm -hmm. We'd like to do it before freeze up. Yeah. pond to refill for winter to protect their uh, their habitat. I guess just ignorance on my part on the deed part, why is that so important? Stupid question. Because we have an application by something called VSP Land LLC and typically in order to legally bring an application you either have to be the owner of the land or you have to have a signed contract to acquire the land or some other evidence before the town that you have right. the right to come forward with the application. Right. And since the deed that we have, I don't believe, you, now that I'm looking at it, probably doesn't even include the description of the pond. It's not clear to me looking at it that this applicant has any legal right to this land at all. That's, that's my concern. Okay. I particularly, if this doesn't, if this description, which now appears to be the case as we pursue it more, doesn't include this land at all. It's not only that the entirety isn't included, but apparently none of it is. I'm not uncomfortable going the way that Maureen suggested, as long as no work is started until the correct description is brought in the correct deed and land description is brought in. Is it your, you're obviously a key member of the family. It's your belief, your representation to us, to the best of your knowledge, understanding that there may be some things you don't know, that in fact, BSP Land LLC is the legal owner 
of the land affected by this. As far as you know, that's the case. That is correct. Okay. And that if for any reason a mistake was made, that's the agreement among the members of the family, and that's what was supposed to happen. Correct. Okay. But I think we need to have it as part of the final Absolutely. package. Absolutely. That the correct description of that land be included. And because it's all family owned, I, I, and because we were involved before, I don't have a problem with making it a condition. You can write it. <laughs> so it's right. <laughs> but I understand that our completeness motion cannot be qualified in any way. Is that right? Okay. But completeness is advice to the applicant and a warning, I guess, that when you come to the final application, which we may be about to do now, that there might be conditions attached. So, understood. I think we've got to do it. Maureen, you have seen the deed before when you were doing this, or it's, just been, or it's been a while? I think what I've seen the prior organization of the land when it was owned by Victoria Pool and family members. Mm -hmm. And it, in VSP, Victoria S. Pool, what, I, what it sounds like is that the family has gone through an estate reorganization mm -hmm. and they're, st they're still in the same hands, it's just been reorganized. If I felt that it wasn't still in the same basic hands, I would, I would caution you to stop right now. Because approving things that people don't own is a, is a very bad thing. Yeah, that's, a good, that's not a good thing. Uh, and if you place a condition on it, it still holds the applicant up from doing anything until they can point blank prove that the applicant is the owner of the property or that the owner of the property has given the applicant permission to do this. If they hadn't come in before and we were not familiar with the parties involved, you would stop now. Yeah. So and then we actually have a hearing on this in October, is that what it is? Is that the next step or are we approving if, everything tonight? If you deem the application complete tonight, a public hearing has been scheduled for this evening. Oh. The applicant had requested that this, pro this application be expedited so that they could Do it get in over. there and get out during dry weather. Okay. Uh, but the board is not required to meet that schedule. I mean, if, if you're uncomfortable, if you don't think standards have been met, if issues get brought up during the public hearing, uh, you, you can stop us. I'm fine. I'm comfortable. Any further discussion on completeness? Do I have a motion then on, on the issue of completeness only? to make a motion. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of VSP Land LLC for resource protection permit to dredge 500 cubic yards of silt and leaves from an existing pond located on the pool property an old mill road be deemed complete. Do I have a second? A second. You second, Jim? Yes. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed. Okay, then the next item on our agenda is a public hearing on this matter. Any planning board members have anything else you want to say before I open the public hearing? So the public hearing on the application of, let me get back to the beginning here, VSP Land Inc. is now open. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak? Anyone who wishes to speak? I guess we always do it three times. Anyone who wishes to speak on the matter? The hearing is closed. Okay, any planning board members who want to add any comments to the comments we've always already made, and this would be um, on the motion for approval. I have a question. Barbara. Um, in, in the town engineer's letter, it talks about the fact that the code enforcement officer states that approximately 200 yards of sediment and leaves will be removed instead of 500, but you believe it's more like 500. I, I, as long as we're erring with more rather than less, I don't have a big problem. My application was for 500. I, I have no reason to know why the 200 got in there. Okay. 
What about the other points raised in the uh, town engineer's letter? <coughs> Talked about um, identifying the outlets. Identifying the outlet and avoiding uh, the erosion of pond banks and actually showing the location of the outlet on the plan. Uh, on this drawing here, it is not on yours, but where the pond abuts the road, mm -hmm. there's a concrete structure. It has three six-inch drains in it, and it feeds out through a culvert under the road and onto uh, the property of Rosalind Richardson. And so that sh it's shown on that plan? No, I drew it in myself just to show oh, okay. you its general location. It is not on the drawing that you have in front of you. But when you bring the plan in to finalize it, you wouldn't have any... You I can have add that, that Okay. Yeah. And have you consulted with the Maine Department of Environmental Protection regarding permitting? I had uh, um, Drumlin Environmental. Well, that was number seven in his letter. Right. I had Drumlin Environmental, who was an, uh, a professional engineering house I do a lot of work with, contacted Maine DEP, reviewed the application with them, we came back with a determination that this man-made pond was not subject to permitting. Did you get a letter from Drummond Environmental? I did not. I have an email. You have an email from them? I do. From Drummond. Okay. Is that what was forwarded to you? What was forwarded, what was sent to me was an email from Mr. Poole stating that he had checked with DEP and that it was not something that needed a permit, and that's what I sent to you. Okay. It is sometimes difficult to extract an email from DEP. But you do have an, an email from your, your environmental advisor company. Right. So it, and it's a report. It's a report on a copy. telephone conversation. Yeah. So if we could just sure. get a copy of that, too, I think that would take care of it. Um, and what about steps to avoid erosion of the existing pond banks and sedimentation? The engineers seem to think that some procedures should be put in place. We, we will work with our contractor to install appropriate silt fence and other buffers so that any working of the uh, shore bank of the pond with the excavator uh, leaves the banking intact and the vegetation intact as well. So I think we could, as we traditionally or often do, I think we could make approval subject yep. to the requests in this letter in addition to the deed issue. Yes. I, I had added that on yeah. Anything else? Barbara, you want to make a motion? I, I will, but can, can you please um, give me the legal words for the deed? I would say it would be something to the effect of subject to the applicant providing to who? Do you want me to write something else? Well, just question is who it gets provided to. Um, usually you send it to me. To the town planner? Town planner, yes. Okay. Um, showing evidence of legal ownership of the title to all of the land affected by the project. Showing legal evidence? Legal, or, or evidence of legal ownership of title. Evidence of legal ownership okay. To all of the land affected by the project. I think that would do it. Ownership right. of? All of the land affected uh, by the project. Oh. Okay. Okay. And then the reference to the town engineer's letter. And the reference, yeah, do you have the reference to the town engineer's letter, right? Yes, I do have that. Actually, it would be ownership of legal title, not legal ownership of title. Okay. Um, <laughs> providing to the town planner documentation showing... Ownership of legal title. Ownership of legal title. Title. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Got it. Motion. Motion for the board to consider findings of fact. One, VSP Land LLC is requesting a resource protection permit 
to dredge 500 cubic yards of silt and leaves from an existing pond located on the pool property on Old Mill Road, which requires review under Section 19-8-3, Resource Protection Permit to um, that the plans be revised per the town engineer's letter dated September 14th, 2010. Three, subject to the applica applicant providing to the town planner documentation showing ownership of legal title of all of the land affected by the project. And four, um, the application substantially complies with section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of VSP land LLC for a recess resource protection permit to dredge 500 cubic yards of silt and leaves from an existing pond located on the pool property on Old Mill Road be approved. I think you have to add the subject two to that part too, to the actual order. Can I'm sorry. Make a, a suggestion. Sure. If you could, at the end of this, the motion you just made, add subject to the following conditions, and then number two and number three above be converted to number one and two of conditions. Okay. No, subject to the following conditions. Following conditions. And then the, the number two and number three above becomes one and two. You don't have to read it again. Hmm? And you don't have to read it again. And then, and then number two would be the application. Yes. Why don't we make it A and B instead of one and two? Okay. Because you have one and two twice. Is that okay? Sure. All right. Subject to the following conditions, A and B, and then two, um, the application substantially complies. Is that all right? No. No. The findings, I think what Marina is saying is that the findings of fact remain as proposed in our memo and that both of the two new items subject to the following conditions come at the end of the motion and not in, as part of the findings of fact. Yep. I'm not sure what you're saying, but okay. You can repeat them twice. It doesn't matter. They can be above and below too. Romy, do you know what's there? Should we have Barbara read it again? I, I'm not sure I know how to read it again, but that's okay. <laughs> do you know how to read it? I think I understand. Yes. Okay. So okay. you're that's all fine. in agreement that... How about, if, to be clear, let's have Maureen read it, and then, Barbara, you can confirm that Maureen... What okay, Maureen that's fine. You're proposing. Okay, that I'm, I'm going to summarize. All right. So okay. findings of fact is the number one that VSP Land LLC is requesting a permit. The new number two would be the old number two, which is two. The application substantially complies with section 1983. And there's the motion, therefore be it ordered, as Barbara read it. At the very end of that motion, after approved, it would be comma. Oh, subject to the following conditions. Subject to the following conditions, colon. And okay. then A would be the, the condition on the legal title. Fine. And B would be the condition on the town engineer's letter. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. So that is your motion? Yes. Do I have a second? I like it. Victoria, thank you. Any further discussion? Is the applicant clear on where we stand? I am clear. Great. If not, talk to Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Any opposed? Unanimously approved. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Maureen. Thank you for your help. I'd like to see you. Oh, Dr. <laughs> I think I can do this. Water bar. I think Good. I can do this for you. Having no okay. other it's, items it's on going. our agenda, do I have a motion to close the meeting? Adjourn the meeting. So Barbara, second. Hereby adjourn. This is one and two. The application substantially complies with these. Regulations yes, like two, as it was before, and then therefore be it ordered subject to the following conditions. A.